right, well, I had this little breadboard here, which I kind of liked, and I thought I kind of wanted to make a PC board. Um, and then I thought, well, I'll make it more standard, and maybe other people can use it as well. So what I did was uh, I took this design, which is just uh, an Arduino with a, uh, a prescaler and a display, and I laid out some PC boards, and there was an error on that PC board. Um, I, I, I played with it for a while and cut and jumped it and made it work and everything, but uh, I've gone ahead and made good ones. Uh, I made them red so I wouldn't confuse the two, uh, but you can make them any color you want. Uh, when, you, when you buy PC boards, you can just select whatever color you want them to be. Um, if you do end up uh, getting one of these boards and you're nervous about whether you got one of the old versions or not, the only one I've ever uploaded was, was the good version. And if you really, really, really want to know, on the back side, it says Rev A. So that's the only board that has a, has a Rev A on it. So I can keep them, I keep them, keep them straight. And um, I've, I've uh, uploaded these to my uh, share site. Um, I'll put a link down below at PCBWay. Uh, who who also donated the boards for me? Thank you. Um, and uh, here was what it looks like put together. Uh, came out pretty nice, I think. Thank you. <laughs> um, it has different ways of inputting. You can use the SMA here to input, or there's a, a pin here. There's a, there's a header, so you can input here. And it um, has two buttons, so you can have you can write your own software. Or I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, put my software on my GitHub, so you can you can look at my software. But uh, I kind of what I wanted to do is I want to put these in people's hands and have them write their own software. Uh, I think you can do a lot better job than I did. Um, I'll show you I'll show you kind of what I did, and it's not great. And I think maybe there should could be some improvements, but uh, it's a good starting point, and I think it's a fun board. Um, so the, uh, the chip here is good to a gigahertz and, um, I was using it previously at a divide by 64, but you can configure it to be a divide by 256. And in fact, that configuration is at one of the pins on the Arduino. So you can change it on the fly if you want to, but I've changed it to 256 and now I can count up to one gigahertz with this thing. So, so we'll get that going and I'll show you that. So, uh, let's go ahead and, um, uh, put some power on this, and then I'll have uh, a, uh, a generator come in, and we'll measure some uh, measure some frequencies. So let me show you power up here. Oops, this little flash screen, splash screen, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you might not have quite caught that on the input. So it says um, data cal found cal value. So um, I'm using the E squared prom to store the cal values, okay? So the way you calibrate this thing, um, you can see that it's a little bit off in calibration right now. So let's go ahead and calibrate it. So I have uh, 10 megahertz coming into the, into the device, and I'm gonna hit this button down here, and it's gonna say uh, calibration, uh, connect 10 megahertz, then press switch two. So we have a 10 megahertz coming in. I'm going to press switch two. It says, oh, I need to change this. This cal complete went kind of off the screen there. Um, and now it's measuring 10.000, all right? And it also wrote that cal data into the E squared prompt. So the next time I turn it on now, um, it will be 10 megahertz. In fact, let's do that. Turn it off, turn it back on, turn it back on. And it reads the cal value and then it reads 10.000. So now it's calibrated and it'll remember its calibration. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, put some higher values in here. All right, my cable is kind of fighting me here, but you can see that it's uh, 100 megahertz. So we are measuring 100 megahertz. Let's see if I can't get this thing to stay stationary. Just a second. All right, so now we can uh, change the frequency. We'll go to uh, 200 megahertz and a little bit off, 500 megahertz. So the calibration isn't perfect. This thing is non-linear. So you calibrate it at 10 megahertz and it's not quite right. Um, it's not quite right at higher frequencies. Uh, so at one gigahertz, we're a little bit low. 
but it's pretty good for a little counter. Um, and it is calibratable. So I, what, I, what I suggest is if you uh, want to use this in a project, what you do is, uh, if you're going to be using it around a, a gigahertz, go ahead and calibrate it at a gigahertz. Re rewrite the software so that it cals at a gigahertz. The, it'd be a really, really easy change to make. Um, and uh, But you can see that the, uh, the prescaler works great up to, uh, up to a gigahertz. Uh, we can go back to some value that maybe we're that we're interested in. Um, let's see here. Let's say 144 megahertz. So yeah, uh, it looks pretty good. So um, what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to uh, put links down below if you want to uh, grab one of these boards and uh, play with the software. Um, but I'm going to continue with this project a little bit. Um, I'm going to see if I can't have this device output I squared C data. So have this act as a sensor and output uh, uh, I squared C data and then have another board read this board. So have one Arduino as the master and then this will be a slave device and it will, uh, it will output its data and uh, see if we can't put that back in the radio and, and uh, get, my, uh, get my system working better. Uh, so the uh, the board does require uh, some surface mount. So this might be a great great kit to start with surface mount. Not very many parts, just some uh, resistors. There's a little uh, transistor here, and a couple diodes. Uh, but everything else is through hole. Uh, so uh, that part that part is easy. And there's just like I said, just a few uh, surface mount parts. And uh, that's what the board looks like. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs>